you're looking to do an audio system upgrade on your scooter like I have here, this one here is a Telltale, it's an ATM 50, it's a 50cc scooter, and I have it set up to work with this phone. I have an auto sensing controller with a 3.5 millimeter analog input, so that's where my audio comes in. And I can take this phone, put it into the pocket. I've got two speakers located right down here. I got a voltmeter to measure my voltage for the system on here because I have the amplifier which is mounted over here. I'm going to show you how that was installed. This here is just an optional accessory for the underdash LED kit. That's totally separate. However, down here I have an auxiliary battery which is for 12 volt accessories when I bring this out to the park and I go out scooting, recreation, got some extra power over there. And this thing is really sounds terrific. No wind noise, nice and clear. What we got here is an audio pipe system, nice little 50 watt amp, runs off of about 7 amps, and that's full blast, which I'll probably never see. Two speaker output stereo, of course. Now this here is the volume control with an LED indicator to let you know the status when it's on or off. And the first thing I've done here is mounted my first speaker, this is the left side. You can see how I got it in there. I didn't even use any additional hardware, I just snugged it up there, made it tight. Came around the back side. I had to kind of like make this kind of like contraption to make it space out just right. Man, look at that. That's a thing of beauty. One down. I'm gonna go your next. There's a little close-up of my hardware. I'm gonna sandwich it in there from the other side of the uh, front fender there. So both speakers are now they're mounted up in there. So on the other side, I'm just going to drill a hole right around here below each one of these mounting hardware. Um, cut off the adapters for the wires because they're going to be too big and I don't need all that excess anyway. I'll pull them through. I'll seal them up with some rubber butyl most likely. And I'll terminate them over here so I can run them down towards the battery and the amplifier. And of course the controller. So the wires but through for both speakers you can see I drilled the holes basically right next to the hardware so it's really discreet you can't see it from the inside I mean you can't see no wire in there back here where the wire is I'm just gonna take this seal that right up this here is actually like a butyl tape it's pretty cool seals like a son of a bitch put that on there boom do the same thing on that side then I can move on to the next component I almost left out one of the fun parts of my installation is this. I'm going to be putting this auxiliary kinetic battery power cell underneath the, the uh, seat right here where that thing used to be. It's going to go right up in there with two disconnects. So if I have to remove that for service on the motor, I can do that. And there it is. That's going to give me lots of extra power because this thing ain't all that. It's great for the starter. But I'm going to wire that up in such a way where it's going to give me auxiliary power. And it's going to work just lovely. Like I said, I'll be putting my auxiliary battery located here. Now, I'm going to run the cables down through here. I'm going to have a fuse on this side and that side. Both sides will be fused. So here, I added this 10 amp, 10 gauge circuit. I'm going to extend it right here. I'm going to just heat shrink this down. cooperate. That's it. So this will run through here to my auxiliary battery with some quick disconnects so I can have a male and a female so I can disconnect it and remove the panel that was once here. And this step by the way is totally optional. You don't have to be insane like me with power. So now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've wired up my batteries. I have the one going here, down here, and this Y splitting here. You can see this this here is going underneath that little plastic shroud underneath the bike up 
through an existing wire loom and it winds up right over here. So for now I just have this amp sitting here loosely because I'm not exactly sure where this thing's going to be permanently mounted at. There's my power. All I have to do now is just connect my four speakers to the two pairs I ran out previously and plug in my control knob. You can see my amp with all my speaker wires twisted out. Just so you know for your reference, the stripe wire on the speaker is positive and on the amplifier the solid is positive. So I got all my speakers connected now. They're all in there. Heat shrink is on there for my left and right channel. My power is connected. This here is my connector with the extension for my power on and off controller, tuner, volume control, whatever the hell you call this thing. And it's got the 3.5 millimeter analog input on the front of it. I'll show you right there. Just a 3.5 mil. What's nice, it's got this little LED indicator on it, so that tells me if I leave the stereo on or off. This will give me the availability to turn this thing off without mounting an external power on off switch, which is terrific. I appreciate that. So I'm going to use the 3.5 millimeter that I have there connected to this cable which adapts it to this lightning cable which will plug into my phone. Once I turn on the phone and hit play, this thing should start the jamming man. Next thing I want to do is mount my hand controls, my volume and my aux input cable right there and I want to put that up on the top by the handlebars and stuff. So in order to do that, this had to come off the headlight housing and there's one screw underneath there, there's a bolt and on the other side you'll find that there's two screws, one here and one over there. Once you do that you just stick your hand in here and pull up and you'll see that there's one, two, three clips and I give you access to all of this area. So after thinking about it, I decided not to use this handlebar mount. Instead, I'm going to just use this single screw, like I did very much like with the speakers. And right here, there's plenty of empty area. So if you take this and go like that and screw it from the underside with a single hole, and just tighten it from the underside, it'll sandwich it in here and it'll give me a chance to move it around a little bit. Just keep it snug, use a rubber washer, and that'll give me a chance to have the nice auxiliary plug on the bottom and I can have a nice easy to access to the volume control right there. So with my hole drilled, I got a star washer and I got this little rubber washer which I'm going to use to make sure it doesn't bounce around and stays put for the most part. Let's get this guy lined up. But you want to make sure you get it pretty tight because once this thing's on you snap the shroud back it's a pain in the ass to take it all apart again so I'm going to leave myself a little bit of wiggle but I think that rubber washer is really going to do me right so here's what it wound up looking like mounted on there and there's your little access for the cable which I can just drop down I can leave the the phone right around here. I'm going to use a magnetic mount anyway, but you don't want it crossing anything and getting in the way, so that ought to work just fine. Just as a quick note, after you mount this thing on there, keep in mind that stuff is moving around here, so you want to try to attach to one of these existing wire looms and leave yourself slack, so that way if the wheel is fully left or fully right, it's not going to impact and pull anything apart. That's important. I'm just going to basically run this thing down, wire tie it, I'm going to bundle it all up in the central location down here by the amp. If you take a look here on my instrument cluster, I've already gone ahead and I've mounted up a three wire switch. It's a single pole, it's an illuminated switch, so when you flick it on, it gives you this indicator light and you can use that to power on your system. And this is nice to have. Of course you could also wire it up to accessory on the ignition harness which I did actually have the ignition harness plus I have this and I have an override because I have an additional battery but again I'm a little crazy when it comes to electrical wiring you don't have to be so sophisticated but for the switch I've gone ahead I dremeled out the hole and then I use this one with the square um, little flange there because it covers up any 
you know, ugliness. Now I'm pretty good with the Dremel, however, it's nice to have it in there. What I want to do before I click it is I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to put a bead around here. Then I'm going to try to match it up so that way this edge is perfectly in line with this because I'm also going to be putting a voltmeter on this side to complement it. So I want them to look, you know, kosher when they look nice to each other, next to each other there. And that's how that's going to go. So once that's done, you know, I can move along to the next part of my job. Next job I'm going to be doing here on my moped is, aside from this little switch from my under mount LEDs, I'm going to be installing this little voltmeter, which is going to be pretty cool. Pretty excited about this, so this is going to look really awesome. So I'm going to mount this somewhere around here, so I'll show you how I'm going to mock this up for cutting it out. So you can see what I've done is I took some masking tape, I put it on top on the thin part, even though it has a bezel with a little flange to cover mistakes. After I take this, I'm going to trim this out with a scissor, I'm going to place it onto the dash, then I can just go ahead and Dremel the sucker right out. Then when I install it, I'll with some hot glue, I'll insert it right in there, plug it in and wire up to an accessory, and I'll have me a really cool looking toy here for my moped. First step to cutting out this hole for this voltmeter is I took the tape, placed it on there. Now when you try to run your Dremel along there, it's going to start walking around. So I suggest just making little drill pilot holes like this. Then you can peel this thing back and then you can take your Dremel and you can just rip this thing open with a rough cut. Then you can come back and finesse it with another smaller bit or a hand file. So with my rough cut already done, there were some little tabs around the side of here and they were actually protruding and it made it a little bit more difficult for me to be flexible with turning it left and right if I need to adjust it. So there's my top side and I flushed this thing in the back too so it doesn't get caught up on any of these screws in the back of the instrument cluster. So with that thing set properly, slide that right in there. Whoop. And I'll do like I've done with this one here, a little hot glue on the back side. Plug it in and wire it to accessories. So when I key on, I'll get my voltage. And there you go. This instrument cluster is really starting to look pretty cool now, huh? Just check it out, man. Went from nothing to something just that quick. This is probably one of the coolest builds I've done in a while. I'm really enjoying this. Check it out. See how it looks now. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Got the switch for power on off, illuminated. Get your switch to show your power status. You have your voltmeter, your stereo control, auxiliary input, status to know if it's on or off. I mean, that's a beautiful dashboard. I love it, man. I could just look at that thing for a few minutes. That just looks so good to me. Let me show you what I got going on down here by the battery. This here is my stock battery, of course. This is the fuse and the circuit that's running out to my auxiliary battery, which is going to be located over here in this trunk area. So on one end of the cable, I put an insulated male and the other one an insulated female. And what I did is the complete opposite. So on this side, the negative, I have a female. On the negative side here, I got a male. So I'm going to put the male there. So color to color, that's my negative terminal for my battery. This one here is going to be for the positive. So if I ever have to service my vehicle, which of course in the future I will have to and you want to remove this and you want to get the panel up and out of your way you can simply come up when you lift it up you'll have plenty of slack so I'm going to put a zip tie over here you can just unwind it remove this disconnect this and then there you go so they can completely break away from one another and you can be free to work on the vehicle in the future so that way all these upgrades don't interfere with 
maintenance down the road. So here's a quick shot of the underside before I sew this thing up. There's my volume auxiliary input controller. Routed down here through this harness. This here is my voltmeter, ran down to an accessory, and this one here is my illuminated switch for an accessory, which all runs down right through this harness right here, and it drops down to the amp. This here is going to be for the lights, which are going to be installed later on. Independently fused here. There's another fuse holder right in there. Everything is auxiliaries is separated in fuses, so it's rated. This one's for five amps. This one is for two amps. Um, everything is completely isolated. So if there ever is an issue with this unit, everything has its own power supply. Down here as well, auxiliary battery. This one here has its own fuse. The two fuses for the factory is over here. This harness right here has quick disconnects for the auxiliary battery, which is going to be mounted underneath here. And that will complete my stereo installation. So this is what it all looks like in the end. Boom. Stereo controller, adjustable, of course, there. Voltage meter. If you're looking for a powered accessory, this is the other side of the key to ignition switch right there. Right in there in the center, if you test it out, you'll see there's a constant, there's a ground, the starter wire, and a constant. So this is a good place to grab all your connections for your gauges. This one here. See, I got the key. Put it on. Boop. There's your gauge. So that one there I got on switch. I turn the switch off. This one here I have on a constant. Just depends on what you're looking for. Here's a look at what the auxiliary battery came out like. Now that it's completely installed. So right there is the access for the carburetor. You can see right in there that's my auxiliary battery. It's a maintenance free battery and it also has a manual check. You can test it out and see what the battery life is. Independently fused like everything else in this vehicle. This thing came out like a dream. So if you have any questions about installing one of these systems, doing speakers, voltage meters, auxiliary circuits, auxiliary batteries, like you're seeing here, undercarriage LED systems, stuff like that, I am your guy, so I'll be happy to help you. Ship me a message, and I'll see if I can help you out on your journey to your pimp scooter installations. I know I've enjoyed this installation series tremendously, and I hope you do the same. And if I can help you out making yours a little bit more easy, let me do so. See ya.